I think we should start with prayer. <laughs> of course, let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this time together. And we ask that you please be with us and guide us. And we ask that the Holy Spirit will open all truth to our minds. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Nancy, speaking about warnings and heeding things, the Bible talks about a time that is coming, something called the time of trouble. What can we expect from this time of trouble? You know, in Daniel 12, verse 1, it says it's going to be a time of trouble such as we have never seen before. It's never been uh, as long as the earth has been. Mm -hmm. So we know that the worst case scenario you've ever heard of can't even compare to mm. what's coming. Right. And so the Lord has been warning and warning us. And people's hearts are growing cold, mm -hmm. you know, and they're not paying attention. They say, oh, I've heard that for years. You know, it's not coming in my lifetime. And then some will say that they don't want to believe it because it interferes with their lifestyle. Right. And you know, Nancy, it's, it's interesting. Just because you deny something doesn't make it not true. That's right. So you can <laughs> be sincerely denying, but you can be sincerely wrong, too. That's right. And even when you're sincerely wrong, I'm sure you could testify to this, and myself included. Mm -hmm. We sincerely receive punishment, <laughs> even when you're sincerely wrong. And so, you know, just, you know, for the people that scoff and say that these things have just been happening or it's not going to happen, you know, I would encourage you to heed the warning. Mm -hmm. Search these things out. Study them for yourselves. Don't go off of what other people are saying. Study them for yourself because to miss out on these warnings That's can right. be fatal um, in this current life and in, in the internal. Now, people that say... They don't believe in this time of trouble or Jesus coming. You know, they were actually prophesied in the Bible. In fact, in <laughs> Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 through 5, the Bible says this. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of. And just to skip down to verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, as the earth was destroyed by a flood in Noah's day, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So these people are actually mentioned in the Bible. So if you are a scoffer, or if you don't believe that these warnings are real, read that text. Exactly, friends. You <clears> must <throat> read the text and understand that, the, that in these last days, most people, just like in Noah's day, won't heed the warning because it's not popular. Because Nancy, the truth of the matter is, if you have to, if you believe this and you want to heed this warning, there's going to have to be some reformation in your life. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some things you're going to have to give up. That's right. There's going to be a certain discipline you're going to have to carry with yourself. And friends, there's two pains you can receive in this life, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Which will you choose? I know I don't want to have to go through the pain of no. regret, right? No. <laughs> and I neither do you, Nancy. <laughs> no. And so, you know, God has been warning us in his word that destruction will come upon this earth, as Nancy mentioned in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And there will be a time of trouble such as never was. That's right. So just think of, you know, the Holocaust, World War I, World War II, just think of your most vivid imagination of destruction. The Bible is saying that there's going to be a time of trouble such as never was. You can't even fathom in your mind. And it's not to be scared if you're hid with Christ and God. That's right. But if not, <laughs> then you must be fearful. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. So, Nancy, yes. how does God <laughs> feel about the destruction of the wicked? Well, the Bible will tell us how he feels. Okay. So let's go to 2 Peter 3.9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mm. And then in Ezekiel 33, 11, the Bible says, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Mm. 
You see, Nancy, from what, what we just read, God doesn't want, he doesn't take pleasure in destroying the wicked. No, he doesn't. He wants them to turn from their wicked ways. He loves you. He loves us. He loves us, friends. Mm -hmm. And because he loves us, he operates on the freedom of choice. And so today, choose life. And if you feel like you've been on the other side of the fence, where God would not have you to be, God is not in the business of condemnation, but education. He wants to teach you, he wants to guide you, but you have to choose him. And so Nancy, last day events, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. And this world's history is coming to a quick close. And as God's messengers, as God's missionaries, we have to sound the alarm. That's right. And let you guys know, even our own family members know that a crisis is coming. And we have more to come. So let's close with prayer. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this warning because you love us so much. And we thank you for your love. Lord, I pray for each of our viewers that you will bless them and help them to heed the warning and also to surrender their hearts completely to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.